In October, jurors in Los Angeles will consider whether to give the serial killer known as the Hollywood Ripper the death penalty. 43-year-old Michael Gargiulo was convicted earlier this summer of a string of brutal attacks on young women. It's the subject of a special two-hour season premiere of 48 Hours tomorrow night. Maureen Maher helped break the case wide open. This is a systematic slaughtering of beautiful women by a serial killer. Hollywood. Ashley Ellerin, 2001. An aspiring fashion designer stabbed 47 times. Ashley Ellerin was supposed to go on a date with Ashton Kutchner. 48 Hours consultant and former federal prosecutor Mary Fulgeniti. He rang the doorbell and nobody answered. He saw what he thought was spilled wine all over the place. Unfortunately, we later learned that that was her blood. Kutcher told the jury when he eventually learned that Ashley had been murdered, he, quote, freaked out knowing his fingerprints were on her door. Never a suspect, he was concerned about what he left behind, unlike the killer who very carefully covered his tracks. Maria Bruno, 2005, a mother of four young children stabbed to death, the killer leaving only a blue surgical booty outside the scene. And Santa Monica three years later, an attack on Michelle Murphy, but she survived. Michael Gargiulo always lived near his victims so he could watch them. Prosecutors say the stalking gave him a sexual thrill. Since Gargiulo's arrest in 2008, 48 Hours has been investigating the serial killer. In the late 90s, he came to Hollywood trying to be an actor. This is his audition tape. Your name? Mike Gargiulo. He was cast as a boxer. But Marco Hoffman, once a close friend of Michael Gargiulo, says there was something strange about him. He would go online, whatever he could find about forensics, and he would learn, you know, how to get away with the crime. Back then, Gargiulo was also a bouncer with Timur Leary and Anthony DiLorenzo. He was a tough guy. Was tough. Absolutely. Yeah. He has some good punches to him. After I began reporting on this case, in 2011, Timur Leary revealed to me that Gargiulo had bragged about killing a young woman outside Chicago. That turned out to be Trisha Picaccio, believed by prosecutors to be his first victim. All right, so Ma uh, Maureen Maher is joining me now. So you just mentioned uh, Picaccio, and I know that family has been heavily involved in this case, and often when this case comes up, we talk about them, but there are other victims. Um, Michelle Murphy, um, uh, she, was she the survivor? Yeah, Mich Michelle Murphy is the sole survivor, and wow. then we have the Ellerin family and the Bruno family. And, and we do usually speak about the Picaccios because their case has yet to be tried, even though they were called as witnesses out in California. They're still three to five years away from their trial oh in goodness. Illinois. But I think the first time you're gonna hear from the other people, they have yet to speak mm -hmm. outside of court, is uh, in the next few weeks, they will all be once again called as witnesses during the death penalty phase, which you mentioned off the top. And then after they're uh, called as to the stand as witnesses, and the jury deliberates on whether or not he should have the death penalty, mm -hmm. then they will all be given a chance to give their victim's impact statement where they will have a chance to speak directly to Michael Gargiulo and tell them exactly what's been on their mind mm. for the last 10, 15, 20 years. That is going to be very powerful. You mentioned the length of time. Mm -hmm. Have they bonded over this? I you mean, know, they've it's never met. Over, what? There have been some phone calls I know between the Ellerins and the Picaccios, but most prosecutors and investigators like to keep their witnesses separate. They don't want them talking. And I think the intention was originally, we don't want you commingling information. We want you to keep your, your own testimony separate. But I don't think anyone anticipated it would take 11 years for them to get to trial. Now when they get there for the death penalty phase in a couple of weeks, this will be the first time they are all gathered in the same place at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I know for sure from one of the California family members, they are so looking forward to meeting the other people who've been involved in this case, not just because they share this terrible membership in this group, but it's that these women are so, their cases are so intertwined, their life stories are so intertwined, and without one, you can't have a verdict in any of the other cases. Yeah. They all need each of the cases to get to the finish line. Yeah, it's bound to be cathartic in some way for them. Um, does sentencing normally take this long after a verdict? I mean, this is weird. <clears throat> it doesn't normally, but California, because Governor Newsom issued the executive or, uh, order for the moratorium, 
now the state Supreme Court in California is trying to come up with language to deal with cases where the death penalty is still on the table as it is with Gargiulo. So they're trying to come up with uniform language. They are supposed to issue a statement on October 3rd. And we've been told that is part of the reasoning for delaying until October 7th. But there was also a scheduling issue. But if they can get the language the same for all of these cases, as there were two cases earlier this week that the state Supreme Court said, we're not going to deal with these death penalty cases. We're going to wait till we get the language all together. Mm. So we'll have to wait and see. But California is a little different and a little tricky right now because of the moratorium. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Maureen Maher, thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, and you can see Maureen's report, The Hollywood Ripper, in a special two-hour season premiere of 48 Hours on Saturday at 9, 8 central, only on CBS.